Hi, Pammy. Hi, Brooke. Um, just coming in early to tell our listeners that this is going to be a two-parter. Two-parter coming up. Oh, we got tunes today. Yeah. We got beats. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have. Um, we had a really lovely chat with our etiquette expert. Oh, she's so good. So we're just going to dive into that today. And then um, next week, we will do confessionals. Yes. With an etiquette expert. Oh, my gosh. So solid advice. Solid advice. And yeah, take notes on this one. Yeah, so take notes on this one and then come back next week to take notes again because she gives some solid advice. So because it's a two-parter, Pammy and I will come in at the end to give you some bridal breaks. Yeah. Don't want to leave you hanging. No, we got some. Need them breaks. (laughs) All right, let's get to the show. Something borrowed, something blue. Give us all your juicy news, sensational, irrational. It's Wedding Confessionals. Welcome to another episode of Wedding Confessionals. I'm Brooke. And I'm Pam. And the only thing we love more than weddings is talking about weddings. Pammy? Yes. We have to be on our best behavior today. I know. No using bad words. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to say please and thank you. Yes. Because we have as a guest an etiquette expert. Yes. I'm so excited. So usually we pitch like their Instagram and everything at the end. But Mm -hmm. if you want to pause now and go hop over to Instagram and please follow either Instagram or TikTok at Old Soul Etiquette. I've been following her for months. I'm a big fan. Yes. I'm excited to have her on the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, owner of Old Soul Etiquette. Mariah Grumet. Yes. Yay. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So um, one of the things that I really liked about, I currently still do like about your mm-hmm. Instagram is that, you know, you give really cool tips and really like thoughtful ideas to think about etiquette, but I really like your perspective about etiquette. And I could try myself to m- bumble through explaining it, but I think rather than do that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we'll Let's let the expert. Her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. So I think a lot of people, when they think about etiquette, they sort of think that it's something that's antiquated or not necessary in today's society, or maybe only for people that come from wealthy backgrounds or it's super fancy, but really it's just a way to show kindness and respect to everyone that you're with. It's about being able to behave in any situation in the best possible way that you can and just really considering other people's feelings before yourself. I love that. Right? Yes. I totally agree. (laughs) I'm going to start making my kids watch your (laughs) Instagram every day. It's true. She's Mm -hmm. got great things for kids on there. Thank you. So we are going to get in specifically etiquette for weddings because you have a bunch of great tips. Yeah. But before we do that, because you are a guest and the way that the show works Mm -hmm. is that we have on a guest, Mm -hmm. we interview them about their personal history of weddings. Yes. And then from there, we sort of get a perspective of who they are. And then they help us answer the listeners submitted anonymous confessionals. Yeah. So let's get into the first half. Pammy. Do you want to give the question we always start with? Okay, yeah, let's do this. So tell us, when did you go to your first wedding? I went to my first wedding, I think it was in the beginning of high school. I had an older cousin get married, and it's actually a funny story. We went out to, I'm from New Jersey, we flew out to California, my whole family, and the hurricane, Hurricane Sandy hit in New Jersey while we were there, and we actually got stuck in California for 16 days. So I got to see the in, basically the entire state. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. My gosh. Oh, that's right. Because all the, the airports were kind of messed up. Yes. yes. So that was my first my first wedding experience, actually. That is wow. dramatic. That's I like an it. Extended <laughs> wedding. I bet you weren't expecting that. That's a no. good answer. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be an interesting story about the wedding, but it's like no, a natural disaster. Yes. It's a common theme <laughs> on the <this> show. <laughs> so wait, what parts of California? Now I'm just curious. So my I have a lot of family out there and the wedding was right outside of San Diego. And then I ha- also have family in Northern California outside of San Francisco. So we rented a car and drove all the way up. <laughs> Nice. I mean, way to make lemonade out of lemons, yeah. right? That's smart. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so did you go to a lot of weddings like after at that point on? Not really, actually. I'm just sort of entering the age group where my friends and 
family around my age are starting to get engaged and get married and older cousins getting married. So in the last year, I've been to two and between the months of October and November, I have like three or four. Yeah. So they're they're starting to pick up now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that cycle of your life has begun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> have you ever uh, been a bridesmaid or um, been in a wedding? So the wedding in California, I was a junior bridesmaid, if you will. So I was my fellow cousins and I that were younger, we were honorary junior bridesmaids. And then I'm actually currently going to be one in October for a family member. Oh, so you're currently a bridesmaid. Yes, currently fulfilling my duties. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any duties right now or is it just waiting for dress information? Really it. I, I ordered my dress. I have to try it just came in actually this week, so I have to try it on. Her maid of honor is planning the shower and bachelorette, so just marking my calendar and ready to go. <laughs> that is the dream scenario, just getting to wear a fun dress and not a ton of responsibilities. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes. And thankfully, it's a very, very close family member and one of my best, closest friends that is getting married. So it's it's very exciting. Oh, that's oh, cool. That's fun. So I'm curious. I know we just talked about your wedding history. How did you get into etiquette as like a career? I've always been interested in it for a very long time. I was the kid that was obsessed with doing the right thing always. And I've heard it said that you really should make a career out of something that you're most passionate about and what people see in you as a strength. And so I thought to myself, what can I do that that's all around doing the right thing? So I started a career or career, if you will, in pageants and modeling growing up. And I learned there the importance of how to you know, conduct yourself and present yourself and how to answer questions in an interview and just really how to behave in a proper way as a young lady. And then as I grew up, I started to take interest in fashion. And so that's sort of where my professional career took me. I got a college degree in fashion, went ahead and started working in the garment center in New York City in the corporate world of buying and product development. And I quickly learned that I was not made for a, a corporate job that wasn't what wasn't what was sitting with me very well. And I, I really just had this gut feeling. And when I was living in New York City, I took an etiquette class at the Plaza Hotel. And I realized there, I can do this, right? This is something I'm passionate about. And I don't see myself working in corporate America forever. I want to do something that I really love. So I took it upon myself, went and studied as hard as I could, got sort of a certificate, my first certification. And then I started my business. And then this past October, I left my corporate job. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> business lady. <laughs> I yes. love it. Literally <laughs> business lady. Yep. <laughs> I also Thank love you. that your yes. first class was at the Plaza Hotel. Like that, yes. that is a very classy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. One of, one of my mentors, was teaching the class there. And I really just went for fun. It was something to do. I lived in New York City and I wasn't doing what a lot of, at the time, 20 something year olds were doing on Saturdays. And so I said, I need to find things where I can find people like me, where I can network with people and make friends and, you know, really just do something that I was interested in on the weekend. So I signed up for the class and that's kind of where it all, it all started. And it comes full circle because my second training program, my second certification program is being taught by the the same woman, Micah Meyer, that taught at the Plaza Hotel. So it, it all comes full circle. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. <laughs> so um, when I was thinking about etiquette and weddings, mm -hmm. I was just thinking in general that, you know, when someone gets engaged and now they're thinking about all the wedding planning stuff and a lot of what they're thinking about is what are the rules? Right. What am I supposed to be doing on top of like the planning of making sure everything's right? But it's like, you don't want to make a mistake. You don't want to hurt people's feelings. Like, mm -hmm. what are the rules? And I know me along the way, I just learned the rules by being told that I was doing them incorrectly. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you should have done this. And I was like, oh, oh, that does make sense. Yeah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's such a new world when yeah. you get engaged. You just are a little lost. Yeah. So what I was hoping is that, you know, she could give us some tips for our listeners to sort of rather than have somebody tell you afterwards, you're doing it wrong. 
<laughs> to give a couple of tips of just mindful things to maybe help you in the wedding planning process, just to sort of ease the tension, take out the what ifs or what should I be doing mm-hmm. and kind of give some tips. I love that. Let's do that. So Mariah yeah. was nice enough to put together her top five mistakes to avoid for wedding planning etiquette which I think is going to be super helpful because I was a dodo and I could have used this list. <laughs> I know. I'm like, am I going to fail on all of these? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find out if we, you know what? After each one, we will tell Mariah openly if we did it right yes. or wrong. <laughs> yes. Yes, I love that. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're not going to be disappointed in us. <laughs> I know. I have to say, I have to say before we get into the, the mistakes, I think that's the the fun thing about modern etiquette is that it's always evolving. So some rules, if you will, that were applicable, you know, 20, 30 years ago, sometimes don't apply now. And so that's what that's what's great about teaching a more modern version of it is that it's constantly evolving. Yeah, I, I remember when I got married, it was right on the cusp of people tardy, starting to do digital invitations. Mm-hmm. It was just kind of a weird thing. Like maybe you could do the save the date, but are people really even going to see it? And like, mm-hmm. I had to do everything paper because I think half of the people I was inviting, like they didn't have email addresses because <laughs> right. I tried to look to see if I could do it. But nowadays, I mean, forget it. Yeah. Now yeah. it's all. It's very digital. It's very I've been cool. invited to multiple weddings where everything I've gotten has just been digital, mm-hmm. which is good because I'm going to lose. And, and wedding websites too. Yes. Mm-hmm. So helpful. Just that address, man. Just get, you know, you lose the sheet of paper and you know the day and you know the time because you put that in the calendar. Right. But no one put the location. <laughs> the location. Mm-mm. You're like, I don't know, somewhere where, down the where street. Where am I supposed to be? Yeah, I don't I'm know. I'm all dressed up and I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Mariah, why don't you read number one? So mistake number one is that you did not send an invitation to a person or couple, even if they've already let you know that they can't make it from the save the date. Ooh, interesting. So oh. what are you thinking behind? What's your thinking behind that? So I think that sometimes if someone were to receive a save the date and then send you a text or an email saying that they have a prior commitment, that some people would think, well, why would I, why would I take the time to send them an invitation, right? Why would I waste the money? Why I could, you know, I just don't have to send it. But I think that number one, it's the right thing to do, right? It's showing that person respect. They're still on your on your invite list. And maybe their commitment has changed. And then think about how, you know, upset that they might be that they never received an invitation if their plans did change and now they can come. And the second reason is you're you're kind of missing out on the opportunity to receive a gift from them, right? <laughs> Even if they can't make it. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest, right? It's the it's a nice thing to do to send a gift in your absence if you can't make it. And so if you don't send them an invitation, you can't really expect to receive a gift. That's a really good point. I like yeah. that. Pam, did you do this? Mm, I don't know. I don't know if I if I skipped sending an invite. Because I think I think that I I mean I might have. I just I don't remember, but I think the mindset might be you know, for me thinking of this, like, oh, I already know that they can't come. So I'm going to invite somebody else in that slot. So, oh, yeah. you know, because you're I mean, it's always a numbers game, mm-hmm. not always, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's a numbers game with weddings. And so Absolutely. I think in my mind that I would have um, if I knew somebody was not coming, then I would have already replaced them with somebody else. What I know you? for a fact that I definitely did this incorrectly because... <laughs> One of my friends who I knew wasn't going to be able to come and had told me ahead of time. And as I told all of my friends and family who I invited, we got, you know, I'm from, uh, we live in Los Angeles. My fr- my family is mostly from Georgia and I have a lot of close friends from New York where I went to school. We were getting married in rural Maine where my husband's from. So very convenient for all of his loved ones and very inconvenient for everyone in my life. <laughs> and one of the things that I said was, no one needs to go broke because I am in love. <laughs> So, you know, very early on, I was like, hey, can you make it? What's going on? You know, and and, and the people that said no, a few of them that already told me from the save the date, no, 
I purposely didn't send him an invitation because I was being lazy. I was like, one less stamp, one less sheet of paper I have to shove into the envelope. And then randomly, I was mentioning to my friend about how my 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 buddy Andrea, oh, the, the woman who wrote and, and does our theme song. Our theme song, yeah. She created my wedding invitations. And I was telling my friend, like, oh my gosh, the wedding invitations. And my buddy was like, yeah, um, I didn't get one. So I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I wish I had known this one because I did have an awkward interaction with someone <laughs> who Whoops. was expecting the invitation Ooh. so you are correct yes definitely listen to mariah don't listen to me don't be lazy <laughs> like brooke <laughs> i just try and always think like what how would i feel in that situation yeah. right it's just the to, you know it's courteous towards them no you are yeah that's, that's absolutely a really good point uh number two number two is that you are not consistent in deciding who can bring a plus one so I think that this is a very personal decision, right? Everyone has individual budgets, space limits, you know, it depends on everybody's individual wedding, of course. And so it's up to you what you choose, you know, or how you choose to do the plus one thing. But if you're going to pick a pick a rule, you really should stick with it. So if it's going to be only people that you know are in committed relationships, there can't be a one off because then the person that didn't receive a plus one is now uncomfortable right or maybe you have the flexibility that everyone gets a plus one right so then again you really have to give it to give that opportunity for everyone instead of just picking you know this person gets a plus one because I like them better or this person doesn't or (laughs) I don't know if they're in a relationship right and I know this gets sticky because like you mentioned before it's, it's a numbers game and it's a it's a money game too right you can't it's not a free for all but I think that once you figure out what works well for you and your family you just have to be consistent with it. Solid advice. Absolutely. Pammy, what did you do? Um, I definitely stuck with this one because um, we had 80 people at our wedding, which, you know, it, it boils down to, you know, we were thinking 40 and 40. And then of those 40, you're like, okay, you have family and friends and then they're plus one. So it's really was like maybe like, five of my closest friends and their plus ones, you know, with right. all the family and, and the plus ones. But yeah, we definitely stuck to that, but it definitely ate into the numbers, but you, um, mm-hmm. yeah, we definitely stuck with that one. I don't know if it's being picked up on the microphone, but I have to acknowledge the random grinding noise in the background, guys. I hear it. For my husband's birthday about a year ago, he really wanted a grinding brew. First of all, it sounds really (laughs) graphic. I was like, what's a grinding brew? It's a coffee maker that like you put in the whole beans and then when you brew the coffee, it fresh grinds it right into the little little yeah, mitt right. mitt really Brooke it's obviously not a coffee mitt <laughs> the, coffee, <laughs> the coffee filter and then it mm-hmm. makes freshly brewed and he's a coffee snob I can't tell the difference I put so much creamer in every cup like it all just tastes <laughs> like candy but guys like our houses I mean like it's a house it's, yeah. but it's not a big house I don't live in a mansion in Southern California everything's tiny um and every morning at 6 15 a.m you hear that noise I wake up to that noise <laughs> oh Bless you. You can imagine if you have to brew a fresh. We used to have one. Okay. We used to have one that used to wake me up too. Really. They're really loud. They're really loud. Yes. <laughs> no, we're on the opposite side of the house. We're the polar opposite end of where the, the grind yes. and brew currently sits, guys. Yes. <laughs> that is loud. It's so loud. Oh, That's love, guys. Yes, that is. <laughs> <laughs> I, that that probably would have broke somehow in he my house. Sleeps through it every morning. Every morning, I'm like that grind and brew. <laughs> it's almost like my snooze. You know, like some people have the the alarm that goes off and then they snooze it. I'm mm-hmm. like that's my first alarm to be like grind and brew. Wake up. <laughs> the morning is here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, back to the actual podcast, yes. guys. I'm going to gripe about appliances. <laughs> um, I would say that I I think I was good on this one. I was mm-hmm. so diligent about this, about the plus one thing, is that I also um, didn't invite any of my cousins because I had, t- I had such a small wedding in a tiny location with like, there's no hotel nearby. Everyone's just staying at B&Bs. So we literally booked every B&B in the like 30 mile radius. So I was like, if I invite one cousin, I have to invite all of them and all Mm -hmm. of them are married. Even if I don't invite their kids. I mean, we're talking about 
you know, 10 to 12 people. So I just had to cut it down because I thought, you know, as much as I was tighter with certain ones, I just thought it'd be mean. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, so I, I'm, I'm two for two. All right. Yes. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, number three. Number three is that you invited guests to your shower that were not invited to the wedding. And I have an interesting story about this one. So I received an invitation from a family friend to her shower, but I did not receive an, a save the date to her wedding. And I know the save the dates were sent out because now Instagram and people take pictures of them. Mm -hmm. And so I knew save the dates went out, but I didn't receive one and I only received the shower invitation. So I was really stuck. I was like, is she inviting me in place of inviting me to the wedding? Do I go to the shower? What do I do? It ended up being that I guess I she had room to invite me in the second round. So I did end up receiving an invitation to the wedding. But I was definitely thrown off because, you know, you're supposed to only invite people to the shower that are guests of the wedding. And at that point, I had no idea if I was invited. Interesting. That's, wow. a, good, that's a good point. If that somebody is. makes it in, just send that save the date. Just boom. Send it out if anyone's last minute being added. Yeah. Do you send the save the date at that point? I, it, just yeah, you, it was, you said it, was early, invite. it was early enough. Oh, okay. It was early enough. It was pretty well before the invitations went out. And I think that that's a, that's a good point though. But I think I would have rather have had to save the date, even if it was not placed, you know, in the right timeline, yeah. to still get that to just kind of know what was going on. That's right. a really good point. Pammy, did you have this problem? Um, I didn't have a wedding shower, so I didn't have that issue. Did you do this with your bachelorette? Everybody who came to the bachelorette was coming to the wedding. I mm -hmm. had I had the same thing where I again, I felt guilty because all of my family and friends had to travel so far that I didn't have a shower for the same. I just felt like guilty, which is look back like mm -hmm. silly, but whatever. Um, but and again, <laughs> I felt guilty and I didn't want to have a bachelorette party for the same reason. But also because I realized, you know, the bachelorette party was going to if it was going to take place, it would have been in Los Angeles. And right. there were so few people from Los Angeles going to the wedding that I was just kind of like, this seems kind of silly. But one of my friends insisted on it and insisted on just inviting a bunch of people that couldn't and go that weren't even invited to the wedding but they were all they all knew it and it was all like an open like it was just like a fun party for me and I was like oh as long as everyone's cool with this this is not my idea <laughs> <laughs> somebody like with a good heart kind of went rogue <laughs> right <laughs> the intentions were pure the yes. intentions were yes. pure exactly the intentions were very pure I think I was the first of my friends to get married everyone was just excited they'd seen a lot of wedding movies and just wanted to have a bachelorette party <laughs> Well, I think that's the thing about about it evolving, right? Some traditions aren't set in stone. And so I think as long as the individuals invited are, they know they're aware that yeah. they might not be invited to the wedding. It's not something I would like 100% recommend like doing. <laughs> but if you're a if you're a non traditionalist, and that's the route that you want to go, feel free. Just make sure that your guests aren't in the dark about whether or not they're invited to the wedding. Yeah. too. Yes. I think I had again, I had the saving grace of such a rural location that it really was there is no mm -hmm. housing for you right it wasn't that I couldn't afford to even have you at your wedding which I definitely couldn't have afforded more people <laughs> but I at least had the housing as an excuse to be like hey this is it <laughs> <laughs> but no that makes sense I think I would be you know sad if I got an invite to a wedding shower and I was like where's the save the date right. you have my address mm -hmm. right I, I would be confused mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's a really good point so I guess I, I, I get a mark down. So I'm now two, two for three. <laughs> We're even. Yes. <laughs> Pam's competitive. So this is fun for her. <laughs> <laughs> she laughs now, but she's thinking it. She wants to win. Always. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. There's two more. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> What's number four? Number four is that you are not upfront about your expectations or the financial responsibilities of your wedding party. Mm, so good. Very sound advice. Mm -hmm. So I think that obviously there's not a round number that you can give right in the beginning. But I think that the nice thing to do would be to say, you know, here's our ballpark. This is about how much I want to spend on the dress. This is a, this is where I'm thinking we'll do the bachelorette party and this is about how much it will cost. 
so that if there's somebody who really is not in a financial position to commit to this, they can they can be upfront about it in the beginning. And then you're not stuck in a situation where it's, you know, four months in and that person now is, you know, in trouble and they can't back out because it's too late. So I think it's just showing that respect to everyone involved so that if someone isn't able to to be a part of it, they can say it up, up front. Absolutely. I mean, this one is, is tough because always talking about money is tough. Mm-hmm. So that, yeah. you know, especially with friends and like if you've had these expectations and you know, I mean, like the movie Bridesmaids, yeah. you know, she had that yeah. one friend that was broke. <laughs> And, you know, but still wants to participate and be there for their best friend. It gets it's Mm -hmm. it's so sticky and tough. I think, too, even even other than the financial aspect of it, how much time are you expecting them to commit? How much how long is the bachelorette party going to be? How long will they have to take off work for? Is it a weekend or is it a long weekend? Right. So just being upfront about the plans in, in advance, really. Yeah. Is the wedding going to be destination? Like that's a big Mm -hmm. investment Mm -hmm. in time and money. Yep. Definitely. That is, that is sound advice. Just this morning, I actually saw on Instagram and I'll, I'll link to the the article, but Bloomberg business um, had a whole article. um, And the little blurb I saw on Instagram was every year, there are people who go into debt to celebrate someone else's special day. A 2021 survey found that 35% of bridesmaids and 30% of groomsmen responded that they went into debt for a friend's wedding. I believe it. Yeah. Wow. So I know it's a big number. I'll link the article on the show notes, but I'm shocked. So don't be that don't be that bride or groom <laughs> <laughs> trying to find a way, you know, to be honest. It's and I think it's just weird because usually we don't talk about, you know, money and it's considered mm-hmm. as the etiquette, ec- ex- etiquette expert mm-hmm. can tell you a little tacky. But this mm-hmm. is a certain situation where it's like, is it worth it to break a social norm in order to not put somebody in a financially terrible situation? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. With my wedding, I only had two people standing on, on my side. And I was, you know, really respectful of their financial and, you know, mm-hmm. pick dresses that they, you know, I said, here's the color. Here's where we're getting them. You pick what style works best for you. And and also price point. So I knew that I was specifically mm-hmm. picking something that wasn't out of control crazy. Um, and I'm trying to think about the... Um, I mean, definitely there were lots of things I was thinking about with the bachelorette party. Um, but on the whole, you know, I think, you know, I worked with my, my maid of honor and, you know, we figured out actually Brooke helped out with my maid of honor as well. (laughs) Honorary. Yeah. We both were not in each other's weddings, but helped like plan each other's weddings. Yes. Very unconventional. Well, we were newer friends. That's really cute. Yes. Yes. Who who knew? We'd I know. Be here. And look at us now. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, I feel like I was I was mindful of my expectations and you know and my friends and you know like you said at that time everybody and, and this happens too is that everybody when the when the wedding wave starts to happen there's a lot. And it's like, you know, you're going not into debt just for one person. But then there's like you said, there's like three more down, you know, coming up. So um, yeah, I think it's I think I did all right on that one. Yeah, I I definitely know that I didn't have big expectations because I myself didn't have a ton of money. So (laughs) I wasn't gonna have, you know, these champagne visions in my brain because I was like, well, we're we're on a tight budget to get this done. (laughs) <laughs> um, but I do remember really early on, like right after college, I had a second job and I realized like a year later that all the money I made to that second job went to the travel and going to someone's wedding in Savannah, Georgia, just because like I didn't make a lot of money right. and I was trying to make extra money just to like, you know, keep myself afloat. And I realized afterwards, all of that money went for flying and renting a car and getting the dress and the hotel and it was like, it wasn't even that fun of a wedding. <laughs> like I had an okay time. I was like my friend's sibling. I'm like looking back, I'm like, why did I do that? But I was at that age where I thought this is when we go to weddings and this is when you do. And I right, I burned right. myself early. And then I learned like, if you can't afford to go to the destination wedding, it's okay to say no. You can say no. Yeah. But I learned yeah. the hard way because who spent a lot of money? <laughs> 
<laughs> I think too, I mean, I, I obviously have not planned my own wedding yet, but just to keep in mind when I do, I think it's a balance, right? Because it's still your day and you have the, the right to make sure things are the way that you want them. It is your special day, but you have to balance also the, the needs of your, of your bridal party too. It's, it's a hard, it's a tricky balance. And again, I, I have no right to say anything because I haven't been in a situation yet, but I can imagine that it's a, that it's a, a struggle. I think that when you do, you're going to, you're going to be very mindful. I mean, hello, you're an etiquette expert. I feel like of all people, you're not going to go gonna down. Do right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be okay. If, <laughs> if you need to, you can listen to this episode as a reminder of what to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I will have, I will have this whole podcast saved and ready to go when, it, when it's my time. <laughs> so we're down to number five. Final are, one. The final one. Yeah. So the last one is that you are not respecting the deadlines or timelines of your vendors. So this is all about when, you know, you're working with florists and you're working with your hair and makeup team and you're working with the catering team. They all have timelines that they need you to follow in order for them to do their job. And yes, you're paying them for their service, but they are not going to be able to give you the best possible service if you're not respecting the way in which they work. 100%. 100%. Yeah, I think that's smart. I, it's interesting, too, because you know, a lot of the other notes are more about like friends and family. And this is more of bit business, business etiquette. Mm-hmm. But it, it's true. And I think a lot of times, again, people planning weddings, they're doing all this stuff for the first time, you know, mm-hmm. and having to be a client for a vendor is something new for a lot of people. And yeah. so it's hard to think about, you know, oh, I want to get this wedding cake. And I, I sort of have an idea. And I mean to get back to them. But it's like this baker has hundreds of orders yeah you're not their only client (laughs) right and you want you want what you chose to come out right and so you have to sort of meet them halfway in in that yeah and also as we know post pandemic all the vendors are like double booked and slammed because of the influx of people getting married now so you have to be even more mindful so Mm -hmm. yeah i think that's really smart and the wedding vendors that have come on have told us yeah please help us out (laughs) absolutely well, and I think this extends to um, your your coordinator as well. So, you know, they're, mm-hmm. the, they're the ones pushing you along, but there's a reason they're pushing you along. <laughs> pay, pay attention to those dates that they need answers by. Also, by doing that, you take the pressure off of yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one less thing. Yeah. You check off your list, one less thing to worry about. I did that thing on time. That person's not going to keep pestering me. I don't have it in the back of my mind. Oh, I need to do that. Done. Check exactly. it off the list. Check, check, check. I think I was the opposite. I was like, have you done it yet? Have you done it? Are we here? Are we here? <laughs> oh, we did it? Oh, are you talking? Yeah. So for we, me, number five, you definitely didn't have this problem. I definitely did. I mean, it's me. I, I was going to say, <laughs> we are the exact, on that way, Pam and I are totally on the same wavelength. I yes. am ahead of time. I'm un- not understanding why you haven't emailed me back in two hours. Me too. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Are you fellow type A people? Type A unite. <laughs> yes. Yes. We, we have to stick together. <laughs> as we said before, spreadsheets are our love language. Uh, oh, yes. yes. Everything. Everything is in a spreadsheet. Mm-hmm. Always. I blame that on my I blame that on my corporate background, but still, I mean, everything is in a spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> it helps absolutely. And and it you, feels so good to like check that check off that the, box, check man. That box Woo! feels really good. Get it done. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess in that way, that's that can be our bonus thing. Is that if you are an aggressive Type A person, make sure that you're not too pestery to your right. vendors. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point. I guess respecting timelines goes both ways. Yeah. Right? Yes. <laughs> Yes, we're the, the crazy board. ones on the other end. <laughs> I, I didn't my... think of it that way, but now that you said it, I'm I'm thinking that's something I'll have to. <laughs> it's hard because you're just like, okay, my wedding's mm-hmm. like, in, it, I mean, with me, I think I had about nine months to plan it, and man, I l- nailed down so much within the first three boom, weeks. Boom, boom, boom. Oh yeah. And then was again was like, why aren't they getting back to me? And it's like, lady, like they, <laughs> they don't. Need, the florist doesn't need to talk to you yet. Like it's fine. <laughs> Just breathe. Just breathe. I know. Namaste. <laughs> Om. <laughs> well, these are fantastic. These are so fun. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. So you mentioned to me earlier that on top of these etiquette tips, if um, a bride wanted more help from you or a groom or anybody else helping with weddings, um, you have a service that you could provide. Yes. So I do work with brides on a one-on-one setting. Thankful, Thankfully, virtual learning has allowed me to work with clients all over the world, not only in bridal etiquette, but in social etiquette, business etiquette. 
But my bridal consulting consists of anything that a bride may need to help them show up as their most polished and confident self on their big day. So this includes invitation and save the date etiquette, uh, dress, dressing to impress for each event. So helping you to pick out the best outfits and accessories for your shower, for your bachelorette party, for getting ready for your special day. I help with posture and deportment, communication with guests, cocktail hour and dining etiquette, toasts and speeches, really just teaching the brides how to carry themselves so that, you know, they look their very best on their special day. That's great. I love that. Toast and speeches too. That's that's a big that's one. That's a big one. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of people I've gone to a lot of weddings and been like, ooh, I could have used it extra. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I could have used your help. <laughs> my husband included. Oh my <laughs> Go listen to that episode with Jeff Daniels. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Stinker of a speech. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because he's like, you know, he's a good communicator overall. He is. He had a bad day. He, it, it was not his best, but he can <laughs> laugh about it now. It happened. Yeah, it I, happened. He rolled with it. <laughs> and we're back. Hi, Pammy. Hi. Now we now we can be crude again. The etiquette, the <laughs> etiquette expert has left the room. Has <laughs> left the building. It's time to start farting and cursing. Whoa! All right, in this going there in closed space. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'll try to keep my body under control. <laughs> um, but uh, we wanted to give you guys some bridal breaks. We did. Um, so bridal breaks for uh, any of our new listeners are suggestions we give not only to brides, but to grooms or anyone else helping out with the wedding of something that has nothing to do with the wedding. Nothing. So let's take a break and just enjoy our lives with either a cocktail from Pammy. Mm -hmm. And I have a couple little pop culture things that are kind of fun. So Pammy, um, what is your bridal break for today? It's a cocktail I found on sprinklesandsprouts.com. Cute name. I know. Um, and this one sounded so good. It's an orange and thyme gin and tonic. Ooh. Oh, yeah. And it is gin with sprigs of fresh thyme, one orange, and then tonic water. That sounds lovely. Right? Yeah. I, I, I'm enjoying the transition into spring drinks. Yes. I've got going on here. Very fresh. Fresh, oh, fruity. Of gin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that sounds lovely. This inside it's so good. Also, uh, little thyme sprigs are so cute. <laughs> when you buy them in the store, they're these little bunches. A little bit. Yeah, they're very adorable. So yeah, I like that. Also, I always feel fancy when there's like actual plant life in my drink. I'm like, <laughs> look at me. I'm an adult. It just sounded like such a good mix together mm -hmm. with the kind of earthy, um, oh my God. The earthy flavor of thyme, the earthy essence. Yes. <laughs> How you doing there, buddy? Oh my god, <laughs> hanging in there. Pam had a rough, not a rough day, a long day yesterday. Long day. We're really proud of her for making it through. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna start talking now to give you a break. Good. Cool. 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 <laughs> I'm going to lay down while I tell you my <laughs> bridal breaks. So as usual, I'm going to give two. So we have a round three um, uh, suggestions for everybody. It's kind of a combo. So one is an Instagram account. Um, her name is Liz Marie Galvin, L-I-Z-M-A-R-I-E-G-A-L-V-A-N. And she is like an interior designer slash antique artist where she is over the years because I used to been following her for years and years and years but over the years she moved in this farmhouse and just a lot of it's really like wood tones and white but she's really casual about like oh put things here put things there it is such I mean you talk about a break every day her Instagram stories and her Instagram posts are just so soothing and she's got a little kid and she's got a bunch of dogs and they live on a farm where there's sheep and they go feed the sheep and hang out with the sheep. It's so cute. So again, you're <laughs> dealing with stress levels from wedding planning. Yes. Go visit Liz Marie Galvin's Instagram account and just zone out for five minutes. It's so peaceful. It's a great like you can just go through her old stories and see stuff like that. Like she's totally like a really her voice is really calming. 
Highly recommend. Nice. She also has a book that came out, I think about a year ago at this point, which is a perfect like gift or coffee table book. It's called oh. um, Cozy White Cottage. And in it, tons of beautiful pictures mm-hmm. of a lot of it of her home and of other you know of, of spaces that are really curated to look really beautiful but she also throughout it gives tons of tips on how to decorate your home to feel cozy and different ways to do it for different types of room different types of seasons so I highly recommend it so Liz Marie Galvin and her book is The Cozy White Cottage nice yeah so I feel so relaxed already I want to check out her book it's really pretty yeah, it's really gorgeous. And she's also again, like super casual, like a lot of things are white. And she has a little kid and dogs. And she's just like, you know, wash it the best you can buy things that you can throw in the wash, like switch this out, like don't make it a big deal. Like you just kind of like repaint it if it gets a little dingy. It's fine. Like she's very loose about it, which nice. I think again, it's not uppity, you know, yeah. it just feels very, again, very cozy and, and snuggly. Like and she's it. great. Yeah. Um. So uh, now that we've t- talked about our bridal breaks, Pammy, do you know what's next? I do. You're going to have to talk again. My favorite part of the show. You ready? Yes. Okay. Because before you were struggling with the sentence about time. I'm going to, I'm still going to struggle. I believe in you. 2022, as we discussed, is the year of the Pam. (laughs) It is? (laughs) You've got this girl. Um, We want to tell our listeners more ways to find our podcast, find out more about us. One is that we have a website, Pam. What is the name of the website? Weddingconfessionals.com. Correct, my friend. Also, we are on social media. On the website, you will find links to all of that. We are in five places on social media. Where can you find us? In Pinterest. Pinterest yes. Uh, Instagram. Yes. Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. You did it. Oh. <laughs> Also on our um, website, you can find links to our show notes. So you can see all of the whenever we're chatting on the podcast about, oh, I'll link to that article or oh, we mentioned this. That's all in there. Also, any information about our guests will also be in there as well. Also, guys, we want you to send us your confessionals. Please keep them coming. Yes, we love to hear about what's going on in your wedding, if you have any questions, any funny stories that have happened so far, anything crazy, dramatic, we want to hear it all. Yes, and keep, we love follow-ups. So if you have heard your story mentioned on the podcast and and you have something to tell us how it went or how our advice went, let us know. Yes, we want to know, our listeners want to know, we love a follow-up, so keep them coming. There are three ways that you can send us your confessional. Um, One is an email. What's our email address, Pammy? Weddingconfessionals at gmail.com. You can also send us a voicemail. Um, From there, we just just transcribe. You're not the only one messing up today, buddy. We will just (laughs) transcribe um, your voice. What is our phone number? 434-933-2663. You're so smart. Look at you. When you're tired, you're killing it. We should always have you be tired. (laughs) Um, Besides uh, those two ways, a third way is to go to our website and click on what tab, Pammy? Tell us your secret. Yes. From there, it's just a simple form. No phone number needed, no email Mm -hmm. address. You just type in whatever weird name or funny name you want to. And then the next box, you just type in all the crazy things going on in your life and hit submit. Super easy. Yes, it's very easy. Pam, we are on Apple Podcast. We are. They insist on us getting reviews and ratings it's in order to thing. move up into their little algorithm. And you know I love yep. algorithms. Yes. <laughs> so, um, Pammy, how many stars do you like people to give? We love five stars and fun reviews. Five stars and fun reviews. I love it. Besides Apple Podcasts, Pammy, we are on a bunch of different podcast providers. Can yes. you tell me the other two that start with letter A? Amazon and Audible. Two that start with letter C? Castro and Castbox. Two that start with the letter D. Deezer and Downcast. One that starts with the letter G. Google. One with I. iHeartRadio. One with O. Listen Notes. One with O. Oh, Overcast. One with L. Listen Notes. <laughs> now we have the eight that start with the letter P. This is where it gets dicey. This is where yes. we get lost in the weeds. Yes. Give it your best shot. Podbean. Yes. Player FM. Yes. Podcast Paradise. Yes. Pocket Cast. Yes. Um, Podcast Land. Yes. Um, pod. I, all right. That's it. Pod okay. Tail. Podcast yes. Addict. Podcast Republic. Radio Public. Spotify. Stitcher. Tune in and YouTube. Also, losing your lovely voice. You can find us on Alexa and Siri by saying, play the Wedding Confessionals podcast. You did it, Pammy. Woohoo! 
And um, we will be back next week with part two with Mariah. Yes. That old soul etiquette. Oh, my goodness. Classy advice. I love it. We get classy answers to these confessionals. She's, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so we'll see you next week. Bye, Pammy. Bye. Special thanks to Andy Schreier for our adorable theme song. And David Kantrowitz for our fantastic logo. And Ramsey Millette and Brian Maylard for their technical support. If you want to learn more about our show, where you got to go, Pam? Check out our website, weddingconfessionals.com. That's it, girl. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.